All right, hello, hello. We are back for part two. I uh, I guess last time I left off saying that we're going to go into texturing, but that's that's a lie. That's not true at all. Um, I I want to review some more modeling stuff. Um, I, there's one key shortcut that I purposely left out here uh, in the last one to not overwhelm you with information, but I uh, yeah, let's uh, I guess first let's let's start what we do have. We have A to select everything. We have X to delete things, Shift A to add objects, and we can add a cylinder, say. Uh, we can tab into edit mode, right? Edit mode is different than object mode. We can select a face. You can go up here in selecting a face. You can select uh, vertices, G to grab, S to scale, R to rotate. You can do a uh, R, X to rotate on the X direction. You can do, you can shift select multiple of these. You can scale X, you can scale XX, which in this case doesn't do anything, but if you rotate stuff and now you scale XX, then that changes things, right? Uh, you can select face, you can E to extrude, S to scale, uh, E to extrude, uh, and right click to cancel, but we still have this here, right? So we can grab this around G to grab. You can scale, you can extrude, and then you can also inset, I to inset, and you move your mouse in and out. Uh, and obviously, uh, maybe to repeat, moving around middle mouse, shift middle mouse to move around here, uh, and scrolling in and out, and then Q to zoom in on the object, and uh, E to extrude, uh, R to rotate, S, X, X, to scale on the local X axis, and you can also go up here and change it to maybe like normal, and then if you want to extrude and rotate uh, on the z uh, rotate on the z direction, that changes things. So uh, that's that. One thing that I am now going to introduce is Control R. This is the loop cut. This is also one of the most important things. I uh, actually I lied. We're learning the loop cut and one other tool. Uh, you can scroll up on your mouse wheel to add more loop cuts and you can right click to cancel. Right click, yes, I want two loop cuts. So I now left click. And now I can move, choose to move them anywhere just by moving my mouse around. And if I just want to keep them in the center default location, I can right click. So now I have loop cuts here. Obviously control Z to cancel that. So now I can do something like this. I can you know, confirm, yes, I want two loop cuts and then right click to just place them. I can go into um, face select mode. You can also hit uh, number pad three to, I think, I think it might just be number three um, to go like one, two, three for your uh, vertex um, edge and face. Uh, I, I just go up here and click it uh, because reasons. Um, well, number pad doesn't work for me and emulate number pad also doesn't work, but um, Oh, that might also be a new... Th I, I can't remember if I showed this off. But, so we have Control R, Control R to add loop cuts, right? And left click to confirm that we want to place one, and then right click to cancel the placement. What I just did, Alt click. Or it might be Shift click. Um, actually, I'm not sure. What is... Uh, let me look at that. Uh, Blender Edge Select. Um, edge loops can be selected by going a uh, I uh, alt R and B. What is that? Shift alt. Oh, the right ma right mouse button. So alt I uh, and uh, I. For me, it's just left click. Huh. I am not sure, but I just press alt and left click. Uh, because I have emulate numpad on and then it works, I guess from that one it wants alt right click or shift alt right click or left click. Um, apologies, I, I'm not sure what the default um, thing is, but uh, for me it is alt left click. And I select this edge loop and obviously I can control, I don't remember if I showed this off last time, but uh, control box select or you can uh, select one and then control select to deselect. Uh, control, control, uh, 
control click, please. Oh, okay. So it wants more control and box select so it knows what's going on and you're not just uh, clicking things. Control also, boom. Oh, watch me again. Control click, boom. This picks shortest path. And uh, you can also, uh, as a bonus, you can like, oh, I want to, I want to select this whole region. You know, that's the shortest path right now. What if you want to fill this region? You can do Control Shift click. Boom. There's there's another cool Blender hotkey. Uh, so uh, Control click is how you want to select things. You could just go here, and then I'm gonna uh, Q to zoom in, and then I'm gonna Shift 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 Shift. You could do that, but that starts getting pretty painful. Uh, and we're going to be control clicking uh, to select things a lot. It is speeds up your workflow immensely and is invaluable, really. Uh, you should be using this. And then control shift click is an easy way of just selecting from here to here. Control shift click, boom, nice. Uh, maybe a thing for you advanced users. Uh, I just press the number C, or the, the, the number C, the letter C, and this is circle select, and I can just left click to fill in the faces that I want to select, and the control scheme is a bit different. I have to hit middle mouse, uh, middle mouse to, and press and hold that down to delete stuff. Uh, it's no longer control, and then I can scroll in and out to affect the radius. So that's useful if I'm just saying, Okay, I want to select, you know, all of these, but I don't want to go here and like shift select. That works. You can also just do C and then do that. So that might be, and then right click to get out of that mode. That might be useful. That might not be. Um, either way, that is not mandatory in the slightest. So we select these and E to extrude, S to scale, R to rotate, E to extrude. Anyways, uh, yes, we now have a horrible looking object. Um, yeah, I, I think I think now is a good time to start mentioning. Um, oh yeah, one one other thing. So we have uh, what have we learned so far? We've learned loop cuts, Control R, uh, and you scroll in and out, right? Uh, you can uh, Alt click for me at least, and Shift Alt click is how you select multiple edge loops, and then you can like extrude them out, or you can extrude and scale. Uh, you can also inset, I to inset, and then extrude those out or in as well, uh, depending on your choice. Uh, we also looked at, what did we look at? Loop cuts, circle select with C. Um, we also looked at control select and control shift select, and that selects a bunch of faces at a time. And now we're gonna look at the knife tool. And this is K. K activates the mode, and then you can say here to here, and left click, and then enter. And boom, now we have created new geometry here. If you notice, you uh, go into vertex mode, this whole face is an N god. What, what does this mean? Well, there's polygons, but this is N amount of gons, or whatever. Um, Quadragon, anyways. Um, so th yeah, I mean, th this is a triangle. I, uh, but then when you look at, okay, this is not a quad because, but it's a combination of, yeah, I mean, it's just a, it's just a polygon. And uh, what does this mean? Why is so? People, if you look at all their Blender tutorials, they might talk about topology, or what have you. Uh, quads are the easiest to UV on map, which we're about to get on into, and they can be, uh, they're the most, uh, they give you the best models, um, so games know what to do with them, uh, so like they're able to deform nicely, um, they also, uh, just in general, can help you when you're modeling, so if I want to, uh, like, control select here, Sometimes it will work, but uh, other times there are reasons when it won't select this. Um, and they're good reasons, but uh, it can help if you have mostly uh, quads, but I do not worry about too much because Mario Kart ends up triangulating anyways, and what have you. Um, but something like this, 
if I have a texture here and then I want to repeat that same texture over here, now it's going to be difficult to do that. Whereas before, if I control Z to undo that, now they're just here to here and it knows what to do with that. They're just part of the same geometry and you do stuff with them. Um, so that is that is uh, a bit about topology uh, and the knife tool, which is remember K to activate. You can also do like shift uh, when you're in K mode, when you're in K mode, knife mode, uh, to get to the center of things. Shift takes you, snaps you directly to the center. And that can be, that can be handy for doing stuff. Um, yeah, so let's now start uh, modeling or UV modeling stuff. UV UV unwrapping stuff. I guess let's start with the let's start with the really very basics. Um, so we have our cube, right? Shift A to add the cube, and then we're going to go down in here on the bottom right, and we're going to create a new material. Boom! We have a new material, and we can also change around the color. And you're like, well, my cube's not doing anything. This is this is sad and lame. That is true, but remember, last time we talked about, well, you can go in here and you can change this from like, to mat cap, and then you can do random and whatever. You can also change it here. And now, if we change around the color here, boom, we have full blown color. We are, we are out of the 1900s. When is that the invented color? Well, it was around the 1900s, right? Anyways, 19th century is the, anyways. um. No, it's probably not. Anyways, um, yeah, so we have our cube now has this one material, and this material is a blue color. And we can edit the base color, and we can do stuff. There are obviously other stuff that we can edit here, but Mario Kart Wii doesn't really recognize those. Um, it, it sort of does, but we, we won't talk about it. Um, mostly because I do not know which ones it does or does not support. Now, if we go into the shading editor, remember this is you know the layout that we're going to be doing basically everything. But if you go into the shading editor, oh look, we're on normal, uh, so we should go to global. So just just a reminder of you can do things, and then why isn't my thing not working? We'll have you you know made sure to check whether your thing works or not. Or sorry, you're you're in the correct correct settings. If you go to the shader editor and we change stuff here. This is the exact same thing as this panel over here. Um, it's just, this is using a node setup. So we could shift a add, uh, we could add what we want. We could have like a magic texture and then you plug this into the base color. And now we have node stuff happening, but we're not gonna touch that. X to delete um, is the same same stuff basically, but I uh, that's great and all, but it's not a texture. I uh, actually before that, let me first. So what did I just do? I went over here. Yeah, this one object, this cube, has currently one material attached to it. We can add another material. Great, but this other material hasn't actually like the slot is enabled for it, but nothing's there. So let's create a new thing. Uh, you could also like do a drop down thing. Um, let's. It looks like we already have a material here that's not being used. Uh, because we created new material or something? Yeah, okay, anyways, uh, we now have two materials on the same object, but it's not happening because we haven't actually applied this material to any of the faces. So now we can tab into edit mode, can face select, select one, one face here, and then say, actually I want to assign this material to this face, and boom. Ta-da! We have we now have more than one color, and ta-da! And get this! No way! What am I gonna do? I'm gonna add a new material. I'm gonna make it red, and then I'm gonna assign this face that material. Or you can assign multiple at once. I'm shift selecting this, this, and this, and this, and this, and then I, you know give them the material, and now they all have that material. Um, so that is that is multiple material slots, and you have, each face has its own material slot. Okay, that's cool. 
But what's the real cool part is when these materials are not just your basic, you know, blue, red, white, but they, in fact, if you click this arrow, if you click this thing here and you add an image texture and you then open this image texture, that's where we get stuff. And actually, I have not created a folder for this. So let's, um, let's create a new folder. I uh, new folder. Uh, let's call this tutorial uh, Blender uh, long form. And <laughs> okay, uh, yep. Okay, and actually, hold with me. All right, I am back. I uh, so if we go and now open, and I want to go to my custom tracks folder. I uh, and then I want to find my new folder that I just created. Uh, this is tutorial blender and then textures. Uh, it is very useful to have a dedicated textures folder um, due to just file indexing. And if you're moving around your blender file um, to different places, you already, you already know where the, re the textures should be referenced and you don't have to spend an hour to referencing your textures again. That's painful, I've done it. You just want a textures folder. Um, that will make your life much nicer. Now, I have a bunch of textures here that I'm going to choose from. Um, you can uh, get a lot of these textures from Jasper's texture pack, um, which is just basically a bunch of games that have been ripped and all of their textures. Um, it is a very large folder of textures and You'll probably find what you're looking for there, though it might take a long time because there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, I have a few games like uh, The Legend of Spyro on the texturesresource.com, I think. Um, that is a very good set of textures. Um, but uh, I'm just going to take some of my textures from one of my previous tracks um, and use that as, as, as the textures. So. If uh, we went into this material and then we uh, opened this, the texture that we want to find, and then we navigated here and we found the right texture that we wanted, and we now this material actually has this texture associated with it. And you can see here, now instead of having you know just generic blue, they have actual actual orange. Now, what if I want? What if I want this to look not bad? I uh, you can go to a face, and then you can hit U. This is your another Blender hotkey that you're going to use all the time. U to bring up this menu, and then you can hit unwrap. Or the even faster thing, U U. Uh, likewise, if I hit U C, that will do a cube projection. You can see on the bottom left. Maybe you can't read it, but it says cube projection. Um, different things are used for different things. Uh, that was, sorry, one of the worst sentences I think I've said a long time. Um, but if I want to select all of these and UV unwrapping, I can just try the naive unwrap and let's see if that gives us anything. This doesn't look particularly glamorous. I uh, notice right here, it's working really well at these textures here. Not so hot. Uh, it's it's definitely having some struggle going across here. So if I select all these again, shift select, right? Um, let's try cube projection, and maybe that's more what I wanted. So like right here, this works perfectly. Um, these don't line up here, these don't line up here, but maybe that's okay. Maybe, you know, you're not going to see both the side and the so top at the same time. Um, you can also try, okay, well let's UV unwrap this here. I uh, maybe a cube project and this cube project uh, there there are parts of it that worked um, I don't know I like this UV unwrap and then this is a cube and you know, there's there's ways of doing that um, but the real where the real stuff happens is you go into the UV editing tab and now now you can see we had our and we have to switch this over to, from solid mode to uh, 
material mode? Is that what they're called? Viewport shading versus, no. Solid mode, material preview, yeah. Um, it's just a separate window, so you it's like a new scene and you have to reconfigure all your settings again. Um, but you can see if I select this face, this UV pops up over here. This face has this corresponding UV. This face has this UV. So now if I want to say, well, actually I want this to be you know lined up with this. What I'd maybe do, so I'd maybe select these. I can shift select these vertices, right? I'm in vertex select mode. And then I can maybe scale it down, S to scale, right? And I can bring it here. I can scale it up and I can, I'm, I'm using shift when I'm moving my, when I'm grabbing G to grab. Um, you can also press shift while you're, or press and hold shift, which uh, makes your things smoother. And now if I look at these UVs, oh yeah, they're, they're lining up, um, which which is good. Um, uh, yeah, so now if we have the rest of the cube, we can say, okay, well, I, I don't, you know, let me bring up the material properties panel here, and I want this red to not be red, I want it to be a different texture. So right, we're gonna go here, we're gonna go image texture, and then we're gonna open, uh, go to our textures folder, and then we're gonna say, maybe I want this wall texture, okay? And it comes in with some default UVs and you can scale it up, S to scale, right? S, X, S, Y. There's no S, Z here because it's only two dimensions. And you can rotate and you can also hit R, you know, R to rotate, and then at the top left, there's a rotation by some amount of degrees. If you just type in 90 and then press enter, you can see it rotates by 90. Right now, there, the light is hitting it from the bottom. So if we, uh, if we select A to select everything, and then R to rotate, and then 180, boom. You've now rotated your UVs by 180 degrees. That's nice, that's cool. So we have our tree right next to our uh, bricks on the same object. And we still have this, uh, if we want, we can also go here and we can select uh, and then uh, zoom in and we see that, nope, there's there's no more white uh, white tiles. This thing at the bottom is, uh, yeah, it's this brick. Um, brick texture. So sometimes it doesn't like if I go here, you can see it updates this texture here. If, if I go here, it updates the texture. Sometimes it doesn't. Um, and you can also manually select here to know what I should have in the background. So maybe I want this road, um, even though we don't have that as a texture option anymore. We look, lo you know, we loaded it uh, in Blender. So it, you know, still has that hanging around as an image up here. Um, but we don't actually have anything corresponding here. Let's just UU to unwrap it. And uh, we can also, you know, U and then you can project from view. So sometimes you might have, I want this ground texture and I would just, you know, I'm gonna to go to top view and then I'm gonna project from view. And then you can maybe scale it up from here. And that can be, that can be helpful sometimes uh, just going to top view and then projecting from view. Um, maybe on a more complicated object, um, I guess let's, uh, how do we want this? Let's scale on the X direction and, uh, and then we're gonna add a loop cut here, control R to add a loop cut and you can scroll up or down. Uh, we're just gonna select one and then left click to cancel. And then we're gonna scale this out uh, and then we're gonna alt click. Uh, notice we're in a uh, we're in vertex select mode. Uh, and then I can alt click to try to select this bottom loop, and it's not liking me, so I'm just gonna manually shift select. Uh, you can also control select, but for these four, it's easier to just do that. I also could have um, just selected this bottom face; that would have been easier. Uh, and then scale. Uh, if you're an advanced user, you can Alt S. Sometimes scales in the normal uh, sc scales uh, differently. In this case, it doesn't. It doesn't work how we want it to do. 
So now we've, we've scaled it and maybe let's scale it on the Y as well. Some more, uh, let's go to vertex select mode and then just uh, scale these on the Y too. Shift select and then scale on the Y. So now we have, we have this and then we're gonna take this and extrude it on the Z axis. Okay, uh, this is gonna emulate as our like cliff face with then a fence on top of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign this, this is our new cube, and we're gonna give it a default rock material. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna, you know, new object, new material, and then I'm going to go to an image texture. I'm gonna open, I'm gonna go to my textures folder, um, and I'm going to find a rock texture. Uh, and it, you know, tries to, tries to give some if you tab and then A to select everything, you can see this is a standard, you know, cube unwrapping, but we've already, we've edited it, so it's no longer just a cube. So we're gonna select everything, but then we're maybe gonna control, uh, box select this one out. I would deselect that because we don't want that rocket texture applied to that, um, to that face. And this will make our UV uh, unwrapping process easier. And then we're gonna try a default. Um, really interesting. So our default UV unwrapping didn't work. So we're gonna try a cube project. Uh, and cube project, if you now look at this, this worked, this worked better. Um, obviously just due to the lot side nature, it doesn't quite know what to do with it. So you can also say like control deselect these or just shift, you know, shift select the ones that you want depending on whatever is easier. And then we can maybe scale this out on the X direction. And now these look a lot more, you know, le less stretched. Uh, and these we probably want to, oop. So I'm getting lost, so I'm gonna hit Q and you know zoom in back into my object and then these need to be scaled out in the x direction and maybe scaled up on the y direction and for rock textures like these it doesn't really matter if they seem or not that's not a big deal um some things it is a big deal if they seem or not and we'll we'll get to that when we actually start modeling our track uh when we actually need to need to use that functionality here we're gonna say let's just have this be dirt so we're gonna have a new material uh, we're gonna create a new one if you wanted to use a previous one you could go here uh, instead of creating a new one you can just hit this drop down say I want material one and then I'm gonna assign that to this face and then I get this tree um, uh, you notice right now it's not updating correctly this is what I was saying is uh, and we can just go up here and now we know, okay, yeah, this is our, so our wood texture, um, but we don't want that. We actually want to create a new one. Uh, and so we're gonna create, go to our new, new texture that we just created. We're gonna have that be our base colors and image texture. And then I'm gonna have it dirt. And I now have dirt on top. Cool. Now this is a fence. Uh, so let's create new material. Right, uh, and let's have this base color be an image texture, and then I'm going to uh, use this fence maybe, and I'm going to assign it to this to this face. Now, if you look at my, where my UVs are, I can A to select everything, and I can also uh, there's no Q I uh, in the UV editing tab, but it's always going to be roughly in the center. Uh, the default. Uh, I guess when we when we edited when we edited our main uh, object from a cube and then we extruded this up, there's no default UVs attached with it. So we have to create them ourselves by unwrapping of some variety. Uh, so maybe a cube project and then let's scale it up. And you can see, oh yeah, nice. I can see that's that's starting to happen. Maybe it's a bit stretched. How do we how do we do this? Well we need to scale our UVs, right? I, uh, it's either you can scale the object and look, oh, that's, that's nice, but maybe that's not what we want the rest of it to look like. So we can scale our UVs, scale on the, if we scale on the Y direction, that's not what we want. So it has to be on the X direction then. 
And now we have a fence on top of a cliff on top of a uh, mud. And now you're like, huh. Well, I couldn't tell that those were rock and mud because of these lighting stuff. So let's let's now change our lighting stuff. So if we go back into solid mode, we couldn't do this previously um, because we were just changing our base color, uh, but not actually having it be a texture. But we go to flat, and then we go to texture. And now, now we're getting somewhere, right? Now we actually have lighting that looks realistic, and this is pretty akin to how Margaret Reed does it. Uh, I can also drag this window over just by going in the middle of these. You can also like right click to join areas, join, join areas if you want to remove stuff or whatever. Um, but we just created our first like actual like thing. That's kind of cool. Um, and likewise, uh, we can go into solid mode and flat and texture. So this is, yeah, having, uh, I'm typically modeling most all of the time, either, uh, I'm typically modeling in like uh, random and, uh, oh, that looks terrible, and um, cavity and I do a matte cap and this is usually where I'm modeling stuff and then if I go on to texturing and UV editing, then I go into uh, flat and texture. And this is how it how it looks good in game. Um, so right now we've covered, how do I, okay, let's, let's pose another, ask another question for you. How would I, I make this go back? Uh, er, that's a, that's a really bad question. Uh, <laughs> well, the answer is loop cuts. Yeah, because that's what I was looking for. Um, so if I want to do a loop cut, uh, these are all part of the same object, and then Control R is to add a loop cut. Right now, it's not cutting through them, and that's because of the way I constructed this mesh. Um, it's currently only wanting to do a loop cut at the bot. You know, this is at the bottom of our mesh. This is where it wants to do the loop cut not down the center here. So what you can also do is you can, this is where the knife tool comes in helpful. And if you remember shift is uh, how you constrain the knife, to knife tool to the center of things and left click and then enter to enter to enter. And then you have, you have stuff and you can, you know, maybe move it G Y in the Y direction. And then if you want to move it back again, you can try to add loop cut, but it doesn't work. So you go knife tool and you go to center and you go to center and you hit enter and then you move this stuff back maybe. And then you rotate it on the Z axis and you actually have something cool. And if you're like, oh, I don't like where this, uh, this uh, vertex is, you can G to grab and then you can grab out on the x-axis and then on the y-axis, but note that, okay, you're editing the actual geometry itself, but if I edit it, the UVs go out of place. So then what you'd have to do is you'd have to select all of these, or you can also select all of the same material here, uh, which happens to be the same texture, and hit like A or U to unwrap and then C uh, to cube unwrap and then go into UV editing and scale some stuff and uh, you can see it's still not still not liking it here um, and we just try maybe a basic unwrap and that yeah that looks better um, but then obviously wow that still sucks um, if worse comes to worst you can always just project from view uh, and then you uh, yeah, so, and now we have something that looks normal, right? Um, so that's what the, that's the, that's the power of project from view, uh, is it's basically manual on UV unwrapping, um, but for a bunch of faces at the same time, uh, whereas you unwrap does manual UV unwrapping, you know, if I just select one UV unwrap it, and then I can move around these vertices and I can try to unwrap it. 
or I can just do a swath of them at the same time. I can try to UV map, but it might not like that. So you can also project from view, but obviously if I'm if I'm project from view here, then I'm getting something that's very twisted, etc. Which is not surprising because it's literally from view. Um, so that's uh, we talked about the knife tool. We talked about loot cuts. We t uh, which is Control R, knife tools K. Uh, we talked about uh, there's all these different materials, each of them with their corresponding texture, and then uh, I can uh, I can maybe split th these things. So maybe that's the next thing we'll look at. So if I want to just edit this fence and only this fence, not anything around it, I want to grab this fence up. Well, right now I can't do that, right? I can go into well, I am in edit mode, but I'm like, okay, I want to grab this, this fence. Sorry, where's my, okay. I want to grab this fence up. GZ. Oh, well, that's not what we want. So how do we, like, separate it out? How to separate in Blender. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to Google for the rest of it. No, uh, P, P to separate. Why is that P? I have no idea. S is already, actually, yeah, S is already used for scale. So set per rate, maybe. I'm, I'm guessing that's it. And then we just selected, I uh, re remember control select to select the shortest path and then uh, P to separate by selection. And now we have two objects here. So if I go into the first object and I go into edit mode and I move stuff around, it's not affecting the second object but you notice that I also can't click on this um, fence because it's a separate object, like they're not the same geometries. So I can't edit both of their geometries at the same time. So I have to go click on this. Now I'm in the new object and now I can G to grab and etc. Or just do the do the rest of the stuff, not etc. But um, just do it, man. Um, so, now I can just move this object around, G to grab, right? G, X, uh, G, Y, 10, enter, sure. Um, R, Z, but I, um, okay, let's, let's say you later on find out, okay, we separated these, but actually for like UV unwrapping purposes, I'd like to actually join these together again. Um, because right now what's happening if I'm UV unwrapping, you know, I press UU, but I, I can't select this other geometry to UV unwrap, right? So what you can do is you can select this and then shift select this, or if you have multiple objects, you can keep shift selecting and then a control J. That is your uh, option for joining or a hotkey for joining. All of these, I'm pr they're like, they've gotta be in here. Like here, here, object, join yeah and then you can see control J so you can technically do everything in these menus but you do not want to do that um, just very painful control J is how you join and now you can actually edit both of these UVs at the same time in this case you don't want to at all um, one thing I uh, one problem that you're gonna encounter and you're also gonna encounter this with a lot of models that you import is that right now, if I was to move this vertex, what do you think would happen? I remember I Q to zoom into that vertex. What do you think would happen if I move this vertex? Oh, is that is that what you expected? So right now, we joined this object into this one. So this, the bottom of this vertex matches up with the top of this vertex. So they, they're two vertices in the same place. Uh, but they're not actually joined. So how do you how do you fix that? You I uh, with the object that you selected in edit mode, hit A to select everything, right? And then M to merge. M to merge. And then we want to merge by distance. And that will remove these duplicated vertices. Duplicated vertices are a problem that happens everywhere. If you extrude and forget about it, there's duplicated vertices. So just occasionally just tab into your object, hit A, M, merge by distance. Uh, and that will clear up these duplicated vertices. 
and you are happy to go on with your life. Um, if I wanted to end this fence, I, but I didn't want like a harsh, you know, right now there's a pretty harsh thing. Uh, if I wanted to merge it down at the bottom, you can select this, shift select that, merge, and then I want to merge the first one at the last one. And you can see why it did exactly that. Uh, we can repeat this same story over here, Q to zoom in, uh, and then M merge at last. Or you can also do M merge at center of the two. And that brings obviously this one up, so that can be not usually what we want. You can also merge it at the first one. Uh, it doesn't really matter as long as you get the result that you want. So now we get something definitely very different. Um, and then you're like, okay, well, let's say that I don't want this straight line going across, but I actually want it to fall down. Uh, you can go select these, look at them in the UV editing tab, and see, okay, if I select this one, I move it around, this is what's happening to my UVs. So I can move this up, maybe GY, and now I'm seeing, oh yeah, I like that one more. Uh, and obviously if you're going up too, too far, then you're seeing the ones at top. So maybe that's what you want. Um, so that's an example of basic UV editing manipulation. So we've covered loop cuts with Control R. We've uh, discussed the knife tool. We've discussed joining. Uh, we've discussed UV editing. Um, a, all these different materials have different um, textures associated with them. Uh, you can also, uh, here's a handy thing, A to select everything, and P separate by material. And so you can obviously separate by selection, but you can also separate by material, which uh, we, we will use for custom tracks, or I use it all the time for making custom tracks, so maybe you will too. Um, probably you will, um, but now you can, you know, it's just also handy f sometimes for modeling, is now I have this object. Uh, one thing that you just noted, uh, or might have might have found, if I rotate this object, well that's, that's maybe not where I want it, like, I'm rotating on the z-axis, why is it going around this center point here? That's because the previous object had its center point at zero, zero, but maybe we don't want this. So you can right click and set origin, origin to geometry. Now if I rotate on the z-axis, that's maybe more of where I want it, right? You know, this, this orange dot, if you can see it, is the center of our, center of our geometry, and uh, right click on the object, so origin, origin to geometry. So that's, that's some cool stuff. Um, so we can now model basic stuff, we can do basic UV unwrapping, and the next part we'll actually uh, start making um, making a test layout, and then we'll uh, go from there. All right.